Hello, my name is Michael Hennessy. In this series of videos, Shea Phelan, Kieran Collins and I will visit farmers who are working with the Enable Conservation Tillage Project over the last five years. We will visit these farms throughout the year to see how they're getting on using their establishment system, but also to see how they're controlling grass weeds in these systems, of which some of the weeds are problematic on many of the farms. I'm in the heart of tillage country down here in Wexford. I'm now heading across towards Simon Neville's farm, who is farming a min-till system, uh, and he has a number of challenges on that. Sterile brome is obviously one, but he also has a challenge of um, canary grass as well. So we'll just catch up with Simon to see how he's coping with those challenges. Simon Neville, South East Wexford. Um, all tillage, um, went min till about 12 or 15 years ago. Um, we went into a mix of crops probably in the last six or eight years. We we'll probably grow about six different crops on the farm at the moment. So Simon, you've been at min till for a long time now. Uh, what sort of things have you changed? Are there a few things that you can identify that you might have changed over that period of time? I suppose land has got easier to work, Michael, and um, we wouldn't be tilling as deep possibly. And even if the weather is suitable or after a dry harvest, we might till very light. The winter crops are, we go in with a stubble cultivator and we we'll probably follow it. Up to five, six inches deep, maybe a metre nine if it was sort of a compacted area, and we sow it more or less instantly. If it was a real dry spell, maybe you wouldn't sow it to the next day, just let it dry out. Usually till up and down the field first and let the headlands to last, but don't always. Okay. Kind of what suits on the day for what help we have available. Is the spring cropping any different? Do you do anything more? Any more cultivation? Barley's the or same. Give it a run and sow it the next day. And were you finding that your run. winter barley was was creating more problems than maybe? Winter barley, I found uh, I was moving a lot into winter barley, kind of continuous winter barley, but I ended up getting brome issues, and that kind of finished that. Is brome much of an issue now? It's not an awful issue. But we'd be still there if I sowed winter barley a lot, like yeah. We're just trying to keep on top of a rotation with beans, oilseed, rape, like rye. You've, you've other grass weeds there in the system, you have some wild oats? And some resistant wild oats have showed up in the last three to four years. Okay. It's an issue, yes. Yes, definitely for spring crops. Right. For spring barley, it's a barley of any type, I suppose, a big issue. That's okay. why I've gone into rye, maybe, because it gives you the option of controlling on wheat. And then your oilseed rape, you, your curb will take it out, and hopefully we'll be able to control the beans now, I'm not too sure yet. And you also have some canary grass on the farm as well? That's right, but with that kind of, I think on the control, I suppose it's easy control as long as Axel works. We have it confined to as far as not in one field, we just got a small few in a corner of the field last year when we were rogan wild oats like, but uh, up to, uh, I've found it nowhere else yet any, but I think it was just in time getting on top of it, like basically it did, we're on top of it, but it's still there, like we've done plant, plant counts and all like. There's plenty of it there in the spring, like still. We had spring barley in the field last year now, and there's quite a lot of it showing up. Still there. But then the axle took it out. Okay. Like it, took, it was 100% controlled axle. And oh, you make a, a big effort in terms of machine hygiene to try and would, keep it yeah. in that field? Yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. But should we give the combine a blow down when we're done, kind of switch and hope for the best after that? Like. So it's the middle of June, we're heading down here to Simon Neville's farm down in the very south of Wexford. He has spring beans planted in the ground this year. How, how are they looking this year, John? Yeah, the beans, Michael, were drilled in February and bought the pre and post merge herbicides went on in timely fashion. So things are looking really good. On each farm, the ECT project selected a field with a high weed burden to monitor management practice. The ECT project staff used a grid methodology to count weeds each year before harvest. The results reflected how successful or not the weed control measures worked. On the map, squares coloured blue or green have a low weed population and squares coloured orange or red have a high weed population. Simon, um, the, the, the rotation that you decided upon was, you might remind me what, the, what that was? In 19 we had spring barley and um, in 20, we went for winter oil seed rape, and 21, wheat, okay. and then 22, we went with uh, spring barley. 
and uh, beans then for 23. For this year. And uh, hopefully winter wheat after that's the plan. Winter wheat after that, yeah. So as you can see, in, in, in the very first year we got out, we managed to do some weed counts and we had uh, in the springtime before the spring barley was, was planted and you could see it in it there, so you can see was it the bottom end of the field here? The bottom probably... end of the field was always the problem now. We'd done a zero till in that area that year at RH, yeah, but it's not had a great impact one way or the other. Okay, but there was a lot of a lot of canary grass down that end of it. There were, yes. But of course you put in spring barley in, into that field and you applied a herbicide. What what did you apply to it? We gave it a full dose of Axel Pro. Axel Pro on it. And and it, it did it work out reasonably it, it, well? It done a good job on the the, the canary grass on yeah, I would think. But there was a few stragglers just according Very to the Very few track. stragglers now, I think, yeah. Even down to maybe a few plants in the field. Right, and did you rogue those afterwards? We rogue them out, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. So for 2020 then, you were saying you came back for, for, for oil seed rape. Did you, did you, was there any opportunity to do a stale seed bed or anything in the middle? Very little. Into? There were one done, but it was very little. Like, it was only a few a week probably, like. Okay. So, John, in terms of the, the, the herbicides that were used in the oilseed rape, what, what were they again? So we used um, a post-merge product, Michael, and followed it up then late October with um, AstroCurb. Okay. And the results of those, Simon, that was pretty good, was it? It was pretty good, pretty good, yeah. There was really no, yeah. no grace, no No, grace. it was definitely wipe out grass weeds. Okay. You follow up and you, you, you did a couple of steel we, we beds? We did a couple of steel beds and, and the oilseed rapes double, like, yeah. Okay, to encourage yeah, volunteers. That's right, and, yeah. And, and, well, and rape or whatever, and, like, and canary yeah. Grass and canary grass, etc. So you burnt that off, planted winter wheat then for that harvest? That's right, yeah. Did you put on a a, um, a pre-emerge onto that? It was a pre-emergence of a pine tree of a litre of firebird. Okay, firebird into that. And did you follow up then in the springtime? Did you have to follow up? With in the that? spring, yeah, we would have had to too, but we were doing it as a kind of a wild oats thing too. Like we give it a, a shot of Broadway Star. Broadway Star. And how, how, did, how did that work out then in terms of the weeds then afterwards? It was pretty clear, was it? done it? a very good job, yeah, done a very good job. Very yeah. little, if yeah, any, only yeah, the odd yeah, weed here. Yeah, very odd weed, very odd weed. But you went back and did a bit of That's hand right. pulling, did you? That's right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We went back to winter wheat and then we went back to spring barley after spring that, John. barley back into that then in 2022 and used Axial Pro again, did you? That's right, yeah, yeah, full rate of Axial Pro. Full rate of Axial Pro. And how did that work out? It done a good job on the canary grass, and yeah. Okay. Not so good on the wild oats, though. There was a few left in wild oats. Definitely, yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. And did you pull some of those as well? Did you? We we pulled some out? of them, yeah, yeah. And we got stung with bees and things, and we went home. But uh, <laughs> that's what happened, anyway. Right, that yeah, was the end yeah. of them. So that was the end of that. Yeah, we <laughs> give up. Go back to those yeah, again. yeah. Perfect. No, we we got them over, and yeah, most of them before the harvest, like yeah. Okay. And this year, 2023, then, you have beans in the background? We had beans in the, in the field this year, like, yeah. Okay. So, in terms of um, weed control, you used um, Stratus Ultra, did you? We used Stratus Ultra, and then we used a um, claw on a tramline, or two, Tram two tramlines as well. And why did you do that? Just to see, was there any maybe difference? Maybe one might, product might be better than the other. So, Simon, how does weed control in the beans work out this year? Uh, not as good as I would like Um a few seem to be breaking through. Okay. okay, Simon, we've been working along with the validation area here in this field for you know, the guts of five years now. What are the few learnings that you've taken from, from all that from over the last five years? We're well, supposed to be aware of the, you know, all the different grass weeds. And you, you have some hope of doing something with the problem then. Um, Rotation is probably one of the big key factors for grass weeds and cereals, and yeah. I see rape will be by far the best, and hopefully beans will do a reasonable job as well. Have you brought that to the rest of your farming operation? Yeah, we've really brought across the board, like a kind of a rotation across the board as much as possible at all. Like Basically, I was a spring barley operation, like up to this. Okay. Maybe a small amount of wheat and a small amount of oats, but that was it. And now you have a mix of beans, obviously we have... With beans, here. we've obviously rape, but we've um, winter wheat, winter barley, spring barley. Okay. This year, like, yeah, uh, rye. What's your policy now? Kind of zero tolerance, is it? Or? Kind of a zero tolerance, like broom, is a bit, if, you let, if you have winter barley at all, you're going to have an issue with broom. And I'm sure axles hopefully will keep control in canary grass, so that makes it simple. Working away with Simon, both in this field and the rest of the farm, did you bring many of those lessons out to the rest of his farm with Simon? Um, yeah, we expanded it over the whole farm. Like, it was very easy. Simon could see the benefit. 
um, within the validation area here, uh, here and a message was sold to him very easily and he adopted the same practice further afield on the farm then as well. Having the project, ECT project here in South New Mexico was very beneficial from my point of view in that it demonstrated different management practices and it made, me, it, made it easier for me to sell the same message to, to other clients. So it was very useful from that perspective. And in terms of discussion groups or other kind of larger meetings, did you bring those messages across to those meetings? You would have, Michael, and again, like it was very useful to actually have trials and different demos here on farm in that people had something to see and they could actually see the visual effect of a given practice and it made it an awful lot easier to sell to an individual then. And let's just say a neighbour of yours who's just across the road there, uh, he was in a plough-based system at the moment, he likes what you're doing, he came, comes into you and he says, right Simon, give me three or four things that uh, is a must if I'm going to go into the system you're going in. What, what advice would you give them? Well, really what I'd say to anyone now that comes is to try a bit first, like. Because they usually come back and say, I've done a bit and it's not near as good or it's better or whatever. Well, they don't come back to tell you if it's better, they'll only come back if it's wrong. So try a bit and see what you think yourself, really, is what I think. Like, the time saving is unreal, like, and, like, it definitely helps the condition of the soil. Like towards ploughing, like, um, like I would have had fierce problems with soil erosion here before we stopped ploughing, like, like there'd be wind or water, like the the the, the, the mint hill. It leaves a bit more body in the land, like the, actually the wetland seems to take the weather better, and sure the dry land doesn't blow away as much or wash away maybe. A huge thanks to all the farmers who shared their experiences along the last five years. If you want more information on all of the farmers, please go to the Chagas website, chagas.ie, and search for the ECT project.